Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my Flash episode 21 video. Completely bananas, all kinds of stuff to talk about. I'm so excited about season two after seeing Grodd in this episode. It's gonna be so much fun. As many compromises as TV shows have to make because of budgets and time constraints, I think they did a really good job. And the CG technology is only gonna get better as we get along in seasons. So if you like the way he looks now, it's gonna get easier and cheaper for them to do him in future seasons. So we might see him more and more. But just careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet, starting with top five moments. Number five, Iris finds out that Barry is the Flash. You may have noticed the Iris outrage running throughout the episode. This really addresses everything that's been building up with her character all season long. She's the last person to find out, and she blames a lot of the problems they're having on the secrets everyone's been keeping. And, she, and she's right, she's not wrong. That isn't to say things wouldn't be bad, it's just that Eddie would not have been captured. As we've seen, that's already had some negative consequences. It's like they're trying to sow the seeds for Eddie breaking with Team Flash. Like as, as if they're going to be at odds in future seasons. Look at the byline on that newspaper. Iris marries Barry. We better give this ring back to Grandma. So much awesome Thawne family speechifying. On to number four, the reverse Flash evil monologuing. Just in general, Tom Cavanaugh is starting to look more and more like the Eobard Dawn of the comic books. He has this really crazy white hair. As you can see, Harrison Wells' hairdo has like slowly been getting crazier and crazier as we go along. Even the way he acts is starting to get a little crazier and crazier. Like go back and watch an episode from really early this season. He's very calm, very collected, but in the last couple of episodes, he started to act crazier and crazier. It's just like the writers and the actor, Tom Cavanaugh, are trying to take his, you know, show version of Eobard Thawne as close to the comic book version as possible by the end of the season. I was a genius where I came from. Think about how smart that makes me here. There was one episode where he actually said he was giving a lecture somewhere. He got the name Professor Zoom when he was lecturing at the Flash Academy in the future. He became like a doctor of speed force and Flash science. Remember, this is the 25th century. He dropped all kinds of Easter eggs too about, about the other people in the Flash family, the members of the Thawne family. So just right off the bat, you have three really big ones. There's Cobalt Blue, who is actually secretly Barry's twin, so it's kind of like an alternate timeline version of the Flash. I know that's who everybody wants Eddie to turn into this season. The theory that, that the Reverse Flash might turn him into Cobalt Blue. Then there's Bart Allen Kid Flash, also known as Impulse. He's half Thawne from the future, who comes back in time and joins Teen Titans. Then you have Inertia, Thaddeus Thawne. Those are just the big ones, but Eobard Thawne just throws it in Eddie's face that he is the only member of the family that hasn't done anything big. So we have to consider how he's going to process that. Is that going to make Eddie do something crazy to try and make a name for himself? On to number three, the return of General Eiling. Clancy Brown, such an amazing actor. I'm always happy when he comes back. The reveal is, is that Grodd has been mind controlling him this whole time, ever since he captured him during the last time that we saw him. And as the show explained, since the particle accelerator explosion, ever since then, Grodd has like slowly and slowly been getting smarter and smarter, bigger and bigger. So just like the Flash, we'll probably see his abilities evolve too. Although I think they want to balance that character out. Like they don't want him to overpower the Flash by too much. They, they want it to be something of an even fight. So as powerful as the Flash gets in season two, just expect Grodd's abilities to get better too. On to number two, the Flash versus Grodd. One of the biggest weaknesses of the Justice League is susceptibility to psychic attack and magic. They have amazing abilities, but it's just as easy for a supervillain to come along and put the whammy on them, as you know, as Cisco calls it, and turn them into a weapon of evil. I like that Cisco and Caitlin remember how much of a contribution Harrison Wells has been to their cause. What's probably going to happen is the show is probably going to find a way to replace Harrison Wells in there. They'll get better at helping Barry solve problems with technology and science. But they'll also probably weave Ray Palmer and, and other smart characters in somehow in guest spots. We don't really know if Tom Cavanaugh is going to stay on the show in season two. So if he leaves, what they'll probably do is they'll just say, you know, Cisco and Caitlin rising to the occasion, just getting better and better. The whole callback to the supersonic punch was so great. And given that we just got Age of Ultron and had that like the science bro fist, that's all I could think about. The Hulk and the Hulkbuster punching each other at the same time. Supersonic science bro fist. In the comic books, Grodd also has super strength. Although in the show, he's an 800 pound gorilla. The Flash doesn't look like he weighs a whole lot. So, you know, I don't think they need to hype up super strength quite as much. But he's just like slightly more impervious to attacks, to physical attacks. That's why when he got hit by that subway, there, there was no way it was going to take him down. It was just going to be a minor inconvenience. 
If you're wondering why they included that King Kong end tag, you know, with him climbing the building and, and jumping off, it's just to let you know that he's coming back in the future and, and to have a little bit of fun. When I think Grodd jokes, I think Donkey Kong first, but you could go Planet of the Apes, you could go King Kong, any direction you want. Cisco was on fire with movie references this week. And finally, my number one WTF moment, the reverse flash is going to reactivate the particle accelerator to go home. Some of the promos have revealed a few moments from the finale. It just shows the particle accelerator activating. That device that the reverse flash has, the technology, might be something based on Farouk's abilities, something to siphon off the speed force from the flash, so he might be using that to power the accelerator in some grand device that'll allow him to time travel. As in like, you know, the flash will be running around inside the particle accelerator. It kind of looks like a giant track anyway. So just imagine Barry just running in giant circles. More to the idea of time travel too. Who else has noticed the back half of the season, how much more time they've spent standing or sitting in that treadmill room? Barry did it twice in this episode. First when he was talking to Iris early in the episode, and then again with like this big giant wide shot of the treadmill at the end of the episode. The show is doing everything short of beating us in the face with the treadmill. Something is going to happen with this treadmill. There are too many iconic images in the comics of the reverse flash in the flash battling on the treadmill for them to not do anything with it in a big WTF way. So here's my big question for you guys. Do you think that the reverse flash is part of his ultimatum, his plan to go home, is going to make Barry run around at super speed inside the particle accelerator to charge the treadmill or some other device so that the reverse flash can siphon his power and run himself home? I just feel like particle accelerator plus Barry plus treadmill plus reverse flash equals time travel to the 25th century. So I've already done a video about Grodd's history in the comics. I'll add a link for that in the description. But if there's any other bonus videos you guys want as we're approaching the finale, just let me know. I mean, there'll be all kinds of spinoff news coming soon. And I just got confirmed for my press pass for Comic-Con. Arrow and The Flash are going to be doing all kinds of stuff there. So we'll get a lot of news about where they're going in Season 2 of The Flash. Next week is going to be a lot of fun too. It's going to be a Rogue episode. It's called Rogue Air. It sounds like they might go full-on metahuman prison break. Remember, Eiling said, this prison isn't going to be able to hold them forever. Eiling also talked about calling on the Flash for help, especially, you know, now that Grodd and the Reverse Flash are their common enemies. I think that meant two things. One, we'll see Clancy Brown in Season 2 whenever we have Grodd episodes. And Team Flash might get some help from Eiling in the finale, like some tech, even if Eiling himself isn't in the episode. It's just that defeating the Reverse Flash is going to be a group effort from a lot of different people, including maybe some of the villains. Like you might see the Flash team up with some of the rogues. Just remember, Captain Cold's gun is one of the best weapons against speedsters that we know about right now. So I'm totally doing a new Q&A this week and new episode of Arrow tomorrow. It's going to be crazy WTF wedding. So while you guys wait for those videos, you can click here for my Grodd history in the comic books. And you can click here to catch up with Arrow. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tomorrow.